It's time once again to go racing. The pressure is really on now. And it's pole position. And it's pedal to the metal. Go, go, go! And welcome along to PSGL Season 29. This is the F2 tier and we head to the circuit pour a car for round two of the championship for the French Grand Prix. My name is Jess Ball and joining me as per usual, we got the one, the only, Owen Wyatt. How you doing? Hello Jess, hello viewers. Welcome along. It's PSGL, it's France. We love it here and I'm very much looking forward to tonight, Jess. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. It was a fantastic race last week in Bahrain where we saw Valters take his first win of the season. He was in F1 last season, so it was redemption for him. He's not here tonight. He's replacing, uh, he's replaced by Brock in the Aston Martin. So we will definitely have a different winner tonight. And we also have Daniel missing tonight. And replacing him is a new driver to the league, uh, Netsky. So it'll be interesting to see how both of the reserves do. But a little bit of information about the track. First used in Formula 1 in 1971. And it, it had its first Formula 1 race ages ago. But loads of layouts had changed throughout the time. 2019 was when the pit lane was changed from the endurance layout to what it is now on this game. So they should be alright with that. And the drivers have been told to follow the pit entry nicely tonight and not corner cut it because otherwise there will be penalties so uh, we'll try and keep an eye on that but we got 19 drivers we are expecting Desso in the lobby he's forgotten to update his game so we should be back in a minute but I'm quite looking forward to this uh, race tonight as we're riding on board with Recon as he's the first driver out on circuit yep in the Alpine the home car and do you know what we come here this week um after I think I was personally surprised anyway by how good last week's race was because we had the DRS trains as we've seen in previous years. But you know what? Everyone could race. We had racing from start to finish, the DRS train, the ERS, everyone had plenty more of it this year. And you can use it and we've got so much great fighting. This track, even with the DRS trains of the past, has been a classic. We've had so many great races here. And with the potential we have now tonight, I seriously cannot wait to see what these guys do. But of course, qualifying, that has to come first. And uh, with the championship leader not here tonight, we could see um, potential for Suko maybe to start his championship charge. He finished second last week, maybe he can take advantage. But it is a bit early maybe to tell where the pecking order is just yet. But still, I'm sure Suko will try and take advantage. Yeah, we will. And uh, we keep saying, oh, this driver would do well last season. And it turns out uh, it went down to the wire last season with how close it was. So we're not going to edit too much early into the season because you never know what might happen. And yeah, the Alpine cars are probably under the most pressure, as well as a few French drivers as well, to perform well un under the home crowd, of course. Not for a good track for normal racing, apart from this season where we saw Max and Lewis fighting it out and also Perez in there as well with the strategy. So it was good in real life and it's very, very good in league racing. We saw Blizzard won a lot of times here in France being the most successful driver um, in PSGR around this track. We'll find out how he will do later on in F1. Recon now has just started his lap as he heads towards this right hand now. You've got to be careful with um, not going off into the runoff areas as well as someone has done just to move out the way. And uh, it's I, I can tell by racing this track myself, it is a little bit easier for me, but I know some of the drivers with no traction control obviously find it a little bit harder as well. And uh, he's not invalidated so far. He was so close to invalidating, but he's all good. Past turn eight and into turn nine. Kareem is uh, back this week. Is the first uh, race with us. So good to have him on board as well um, in the league. But anyway, we'll see how Recon does head in towards turn 10. Very nicely does it right now. 
He's on 51% ERS, so his uh, um, EI should be fine. We can't tell if he's on zero at the moment, which... Oh, and he invalidated. I'm not doing very well with laps, am I? I did well in the first race, but the second race is back to usual habits last season. So, yeah, Recon will have to go back to the pits, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a shame for him. I noticed a couple of drivers, by the way, went out on intermediates. I wonder if that's even a glitch, because it's, what, when, you know, when, when one driver does it, you can say it's a mistake. When it happens again, it's just a weird thing to see that, obviously, a bone dry track. And Benny and uh, uh, Wizard, who is now Lars, Lars is now Wizard, they are the same person, I promise. But uh, yeah, <laughs> both of them, for some reason, on intermediates. Don't quite know why that's happened, but that feels to me like that's a default thing the game's done and it's better to control, but oh well. Uh, Valentine up to the top four has the first time on the board. We'll see how everyone else gets on as the session uh, continues. But uh, yeah, 27 3 is the benchmark time at the minute. Yep, it is. Louis comes across the line as well to complete his lap, slots his car into P2. It's also his birthday today, by the way. Happy birthday, Louis. I thought he wouldn't be racing tonight, but he's still racing. And uh, I believe it's his home track as well. So can he get a win um, in his home track on his birthday? I, I hope so as well. Yeah, I'm a bit shocked why some people are on the intermediate yeah. tyres. I understand why if it's like PCF1 where they do four qualifying Q1 and Q2 and Q3 where they don't have enough tyres. But short qualifying, I don't have a clue why. Maybe they don't want to use their softs too early on. But they got the mediums as well. But maybe yeah. they want to save some mediums in the race. I don't know. Well, last week's pole sit at Corne is on the mediums too. So that's what I would have done anyway. But um, into the unknowns here right now, as well as a lot of people are going into the pits. Who else is on a lap? Right now, Kareem has unfortunately invalidated. Reese is going on a lap as well. But this is going to be very tough for the drivers to, I think, comprehend as how, how the strategy is going to play out. Because we did see a lot of people go for the aggressive soft to medium strategy. But it's a little bit hit and miss, I think. Some drivers can make it to the end. And we've seen some drivers in lower tiers get punches. So it's about how you manage your tyres, really, at the end of it to make sure that you do make that soft to medium strategy work but soft to hard you can make work but soft to mediums it is doable but you've got to be very good in your tyres yeah it's it's definitely a fine act of balance but I think these top tier drivers should be alright with it even if you get a safety car as well one or two laps behind safety car could make the strategy way more viable but I would imagine these guys shouldn't have too much problems with it but uh, we'll see we'll see someone might try something different tonight they always do there's always someone who tries something but, um, yeah, I'm seeing quite a lot of these first laps um, are actually being invalidated at the minute. Of course, it doesn't really matter too much at the moment, but you still want to do have a banker on the board. So easy to invalidate Ryan here, of course. But, um, yeah, that's going to be something to worry about in the race as well. Because, uh, obviously, free warnings is a penalty, and you can easily pick them up right here. And it could be the deciding factor, actually, if the grid is as close as it was last week. As you can see, three tenths between the first nine times on those softs. Obviously corn is on the medium so it's a bit further off but uh, yeah we'll see how that plays into effect as well. Recon's gone out again. He's on the mediums. I think he's pretty much the only person who's going to be on the lap as well. But, uh, well he didn't get the lap in first time round. We'll see if he can do it second time. But like I say there's so many places you can lose it. You can lose it on the inside curve of two, even on the exit of two. You've really got to be pushing the limits around here, but it is so easy to get it wrong. That's why a, la a good lap around here looks so nice, because you really do have to push the limits. Then the car, really on edge, even through here as well, through five, um, you can lose the back end, something which I'm sure a lot of drivers have worried about before. I see some of them uh, early shift up to fifth right now, just to get the traction. But um, as you head onto the Mistral straight, a lot easier now. A lot of people don't like the chicane you get at the end of it, but I think it's... Pretty much the best place for overtaking on this lap. I don't see why anyone would hit it. We had some very good moments around here in the PSGL F1 days. Back when I think Casper was the man making moves in his Ferrari. Good memories of all that. So plenty of good racing we've seen down there over the years. But now, heading up to the second part of the Mistral Strait. And the end of the second sector. I've seen some people even lose it around here as well. Um, with the tyres overheating. Um, but I don't think the top tier guys should have much of an issue with that. That could just be me not being very good. Oh, but Recon, Recon has done it at the same place that he did last time, I believe, didn't he? That invalidation. Yeah. So, yeah, it's so difficult, this track. It really is. And he's going to be in the pits again. 
and that's his mediums done and dusted as well. He was hoping to actually set a good lap on the memes as well, but I'm guessing he can go again if he wants to, if he's not starting on those tyres in the race, if he qualifies inside the top 10. But um, again, anyway, on worn tyres, it's not going to be the best lap. So, yeah, Recon, I think, needs to get his head together going into the race to see if he can actually hurt that lap as well. Very easy to lose it yet, yeah, I agree. Now, Lars is going through the section where Recon invalidated, but he takes it a lot better as he goes towards the final few corners of this lap time. We're actually following someone on board the final corner for a change as he heads to the line. Let's see if he can get outside of 80 because he's got no lap time on the board. 128.9 puts him in P12. Quite off, five tenths off the the is a teammate corner but everybody else uh, I think is a little bit better on pace we've got Gil on a lap he retired unfortunately last week and it's also his home track as well he won last season as far as I'm aware so uh, he should be a driver not to be underestimated and he's looking also to win his home race as well and that, I think this was the race where um, I said that he would be a championship contender after his two race wins on a bounce. But he started the season with a DNF, so maybe the, the home track of France will uh, start off his season. Maybe his season actually starts in France, so we'll see what happens with Gil. He's down in 18th at the moment, though. Yeah, high hopes for Gil this season. Hope it doesn't put him under too much pressure, though. I always hate to comment here as cursing, but obviously we know what he's <laughs> capable of because we've seen it in person before in the F1 tier where against the big boys where he uh, obviously won the championship in dramatic fashion remember in Brazil in the season finale all went down under safety car but uh, he was the man who took the championship in the end so we know he can do it but uh, let's see what this time's going to be I don't think let's say these earlier times are going to be in a massive amount in the grand scheme of things as he's a quarter of a second on P1 um, but I mean, Valentin's his first lap was enough to still be P1, so he's actually on another lap right now. So shall we see how he's getting on? Because he could find himself being the pace setter, and I wonder if he'll find any more pace on this attempt. Yeah, this is his first race of the season because he missed last week. So I think I think both of the house drivers is uh, their first season, uh, well, th their first race of the season. None of the house drivers scored points last week because as a reserve, you don't score points for your constructors. He scored points for the drivers only, so Haas will luckily hope to get on the board. And uh, they scored no points in real life. They're looking to score more points in this season. And Valentin doing very well at the moment. I don't know he's. I don't know how he's doing this. Like this is sensational. If I take the corner like that, I usually end up spinning. So uh, he's doing very, very well. And uh, it's a similar lap final set to I think to Lars, but I think he's a lot more confident with his lines as he heads towards the final corner. It's going to be very Ooh. close. How is that not invalidated? I don't know, but I think he lifted off a little bit. And it's still a 127.2, but it could have been into the 127.10s if he didn't lift off there. But if he if he didn't, if he he didn't didn't did didn't lift off, it, he would have been validated. So he did the right thing there, but still currently in P1. And Netsky in P2. I've seen him in many other leagues do very well around this track, make some great moves around the outside of some tracks. He likes France and uh, his uh, Alfa Romeo compatriot, uh, Baraka, well the Ferrari uh, engine compatriot I would say, he's now gone fastest by seven one hundredths of a second. Times are tumbling away and they're just so close around this grid. That's why I love F2. Recon's now on a lap. Please don't invalidate. If you do invalidate, I, I don't know what I would do with myself. As uh, um, he's, go he's almost going past the corner where he invalidated last time. Not going to say too much more. I, I can see he's taking it with a little bit more caution this time um, than the last few laps. So I assume he doesn't want to repeat from last time. He's looking a lot better, but I don't think it's going to be enough for Paul. I think his teammate might beat him here, but we will see. Final corner he goes. Could this be higher than 18th? It is P7 at the moment for him. So still inside the top 10. Not bad for it. Only four tenths behind pole position. And um, closely followed by Kazizzle as well. So not that far between these guys that were battling last week. Only one person yet to set a lap time. And that is Ash Best in the McLaren. Also did not have a good race last week, week either. He's looking to put his first points on the board this season. I think there's only one more person on lap now at the moment. I don't know how long's left in the session. We've got a permanent yellow flag, unfortunately, so we can't see the timer. But 
Risa is continuing that, so I assume there's still about six minutes left, so we can get round and get back to the pits again to try a final attempt. But as he comes on the last corner, and that's actually more like four minutes. Uh, might be a bit tight for him, actually, that, as he's gone uh, 14th, so... Yeah, that's four minutes left. He might need to actually hurry it up, and he is indeed doing so. Absolutely sending it through the first chicane. Everybody else, I believe, is on an in lap, apart from Simo, who's on a second lap on those uh, mediums. Didn't find any improvement. His best lap was on the softs anyway. So, actually, I don't really know why he's on those tyres right now, but uh, we'll let him do his thing. Recon's heading back to the pits. Suko as well, heading back to the pits. And so we're in that little bit of a lull now, Jess. Yeah, we are. And I think some of these guys, like Simo, for example, need to go into pits very quickly if they want to get their final out laps and flying laps sorted for a qualifier because we are at the calm before the storm stage soon where they're going to be on low fuel loads to get the best lap as they possibly can. And uh, we'll go on board with Riss on his in lap as we go through the championship standings while well, it's all quiet. So obviously Bouters won last week, so he's leading on 16 points. That's the amount of points you get if you win a race. Suko in second place with 12 points. And we got Kazizzle in third. Corne in fourth position. Dezo, who is still not in the lobby. I don't think he's, uh, his game is updated, so I don't think he's here. But is in fifth. Baraka in sixth. Benny um, is in seventh position. Louis, um, one of the home uh, crowd drivers in Eighth, Lars in ninth, and Simo in tenth. The only drivers to get points on the board. No fastest laps from any of the drivers because they were outside the top ten. Constructors Championship, Aston Martin are leading on 16. Second, Alpine, 12 points. Third place, Ferrari, 10 points. Fourth place, Mercedes, 8. Five, Red Bull on 5. Six, Alfa Romeo on 4 points. Seventh, Williams on 3. Eight, Alfa Tauri on 2 points. And McLaren and Haas yet to score um, their first points of the season. Now everyone is starting to go on their outlap, so that is good timing. I believe Valentin is on his outlap as well. A few drivers still in the pits. They are cutting it fine, aren't they? Uh, let's see yeah. if they can get out in time to set one final lap. So, Kazizzle then, I believe, is going to be the first to get Ryan to start his last lap. He's being closely followed by CC Brin, so we'll see those two that's being completed first and, uh, we'll see how they get on. I think Gil's just behind those guys as well because we're gonna really have to keep our eyes on this one because this is gonna get quite hectic because this will round the final corner to start what will be his final lap. There's only two minutes left on the clock and you can see the traffic as he heads out of the pit lane still staying tight to the outside line you've got to to get that turn in for one and he's able to get through there without getting any invalidations I wonder if those guys coming out of the pits was a bit of a distraction for him possibly also worth asking that question but a couple of guys behind he's invalidated his time let's see cc brain he's also invalidated his time uh how about gil he has kept it valid so he's gonna be the first one to come around with a valid time as it stands and we'll see what he's like through sector one look at the car practically drifting his way through there really sending it and he's up in the first sector by just 100th of a second he's going to get a bit of a toe potential cc brain although he does move out of the way just in time did not give an advantage to Gil, which obviously he wouldn't want to happen because that would directly affect him badly. As through to the chicane comes Gil Knight. A few more cars, three of them I believe, up ahead. I think that first one there is Kazizzle. I imagine Kazizzle might actually get Ryan for another lap, so maybe his qualifying isn't quite over yet. Two tenths up now for Gil in the middle sector, so looking very good to be up into the top four. And if he can find any more time in this final sector, could even be on towards the top three or even the front row, or maybe even pole. And there's Kareem up ahead, he's going off the track. And Gil keeping it well within the track limits. This final sector, I've seen a lot of creative lines through here. We've seen what they've been doing on the final corner. Even here as well, sticking right to the inside line, all over the curb. That would absolutely destroy a real F1 car. But as he comes through to the final hairpin to finish his lap, check the flag is not yet, but I imagine this will be his last try. Corner might well give a little bit of a toe as well as Gil comes across the line. The home hero goes. P2, wow. decent lap there from him. Really impressive stuff. So, let's see if we can find the rest of them coming across the line. This is where it gets quite difficult now. Fabi goes up to P5 for McLaren. Uh, CC Brain is restarting a lap. He obviously invalidated earlier on. We're going to have Hadler P5 now. And I believe a few more are starting laps rather than finishing. So, let's see. That is going to be Benny around the final corner. 
He's nine seconds up on his intermediate time. He qualifies only 17th fastest. Brock, coming through the final quarter, he is nearly a tenth up on his time. This could put him up towards the top ten. Very tight gap in there. It would be crucial for the starting tyre. And Brock goes P9. Next up we have... Valentine. I assume that must be Valentin. Let's see. P1 by six hundredths of a second. So he, he once again is the pace setter. Uh, recon next. Here he comes. He's five one thousandths of a second. I don't get into this at the moment. But he does find more in the final setter to go P9. Next up, Louis. He is uh, staying within track limits. He's nearly a tenth up on his current time. This could put him up into the top five if he can keep it up. As he comes across the line, he does go into the top five. P5 for him in the end. Suko is up as well. Maybe this can get him onto the front row. It does. He's P2. Next up, Baraka. And he stays P3. Uh, a bit of a slow final sector for him. Uh, looks like Lars and Korn across the line. 11th and 13th. Next up across the line, Risa doesn't improve his time. We've got the uh, Haas of Karimi. He's gone 18th. Kazizzle is P5. Uh, I think we've got a Red Bull of Simo coming around the final corner, but he is invalid. Uh, what about CC Bray? He's into the pit lane, so couldn't find anything on the second lap. Uh, I believe that is us, Jess. So that means Valentin. He set the pace at the very start of the session and held it throughout to take pole position on his debut this season. Decent stuff. That is decent stuff, and look at the gap between first and third, only six one hours of a second. Suko not that far behind as well, and this championship, like last season, rewards consistency. That's how Xander won the F2 championship last season, so if Suko could be up there um, in podiums and top fives and even some wins this season, then he could be the one challenging for the title. So Suko doing well, but Valentin... Definitely the one to watch, not who I was expecting, but I always like to see a new driver in the league uh, or in the tier, um, if they've been in PSGL for a long time, do very, very well um, on their first race because it just gives the drivers a lot more pressure and they, they also work harder, which means we get to see some very, very good racing and that's what we love. So And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and he's also a home driver as well, so a French driver on pole in his own track. That's what we like to see. <laughs> Indeed, that's fantastic to see. So then, we can go through the top 10. Everyone qualified on the sauce once again, but the top 10, Valentin, Suko, Baraka, Gil, Kazizzle, Louis, Hadler, Fabi, Netsky and Recon, they will all start on no sauce. Outside the top 10, they'll have free choice. They are Brock, Lars, Korn, Simu, Ashbest, Cece, Bray and Risa, Kareem and Benny. And it'll be interesting to see what they do. Will anyone start on hards? Will they all be on mediums? Will someone even start on sauce? I imagine it'll be unlikely to see them on sauce. But uh, certainly the other two compounds will be interesting to see what sort of split we have on those. Yes, and uh, the gap's just, just so close. Anyone, I think, can win this race. I think we were speaking about this last week. I think three or four cars could have been in the shot of winning the race as well. The strategy was just so interesting. We thought it was going to be soft to hard, but people decided to go soft to medium, and that definitely threw us off guard. So uh, don't underestimate these drivers. They're going to be in for the long haul, and it is... Uh, quite a few races of this season and then if they get them wrong early on in the season then it will be hard to recover from as well so a in few information about the tyres the softs can last eight laps around here the mediums can last 14 laps the hards can last 18 laps with a difference between the softs and the mediums about 1.1 seconds so Obviously, you, if you want them to be starting on the soft side, dearly in your in the top 10, you'll be qualifying on it anyway. You're going to be so much quicker towards the end of the race if you do medium to soft. So that's going to be interesting if you want to do the alternate strategy. Medium to hard is around about six temps and then soft to hard is about 1.6. So quite a massive gap there in terms of tyre wear. But the Pirelli range this weekend is C2, C3s and C4. So a higher step than what we've seen in previous uh, well, we, I think it's probably the same step as Bahrain. I don't have a clue, but we're about to get underway. The formation lap is going on as well. I'm seeing a few hards in the garages as well. Um, so I think some people have selected hards, but let's have a look whilst uh, I select the scene. There we go. Everyone in, outside the top 10, apart from Simo, has gone for the medium tyres. Yeah, OK, so that does certainly make our stats on the tyres seem a bit wrong again, unfortunately, but um, yes, medium to soft, I guess, will be the thing, but hey, you could even, we can see what it'll do, we'll see what it'll do. I don't imagine it'll go medium to hard, that doesn't make any sense at this point, so it's nah. surely medium to soft. And, well, who's the one to watch then inside that top 10? Who's going to make that charge, do we think, and get up towards 
uh, potentially winning the race. Because I do have a feeling if you get some lucky safety cars, or even just the general strategy actually, it could even benefit one of these drivers instantly if they nail it perfectly. Because tr overtaking, I reckon, is so much easier now on this game that if you're on a fresh set of softs at the end of the race, you could fly through this field. This could be fascinating. I think that's what we saw in many of the lower tiers earlier on this week as well. And uh, we didn't see it last season because it had a bit of rain involved as well with changeable conditions. So we didn't actually get to see that. But it is dry at the moment. But don't let that fool you because there could be some rain towards the end. We don't know. We don't get told the weather. And if people ask us uh, or tell us the weather in chat, I usually tend to ignore it because I always like surprises. But... I'm going to have to say Suko, I would say, being one of the favourites. Obviously, Gil as well. He loves this track with his home circuit. And obviously, Valentino puts the car on pole. Obviously, the pole man from last uh, last week, Corne, did not get pole. So the stats for pole light, lights to flag victory is not usually the best around uh, PSG F2 this season so far. But we only had one race. But let's see if Valentino can break the curse. I think Hadler's going to do well as well. He's... Uh, um, in seventh and there's usually carnage on the first few laps and usually he try and avoid those so and he usually keeps it clean on penalties so uh, a few other drivers outside the top 10 I think maybe Lars Brock don't forget Brock came from I think 11th or something that that down the field to where he finished high up in the points last week so watch out for him Lars Simo and Ash and Corn Cornier as well out of position so We'll see how it goes, but we're about to get started with the five lights for the second round of the FT Championship. So, Benny, the last car on the grid. It is Valentin on pole. It is Suko alongside him on the front row. French driver on pole here on the Castle. It's a very tricky chicane down the turn. One will be very interesting to see who's going to take risks as we get off the grid and we are away in Le Castellet. Looks like we've got a good start from the front three. We're not going to go three wide again here. We saw this happen last week. And look at that. Defending hard Valentin to the inside. Maybe let Sugo have a chance. He's gone right round him into the lead. And Barak is now going for the lead himself. He was the one being cried out. But he's decided to go aggressive on the exit. Contact between Suko and Baraka, But he's got through the Alfa Romeo driver. And he's into the lead of the French Grand Prix. What a wow. start from him. We've got two Ferraris type by side as well. And they're making a little bit of contact. Looking at the medium runners, Wizard uh, Lars is the one who's made the best star. Looks like Brock's lost a lot of positions. I hope he hasn't got any damage as he's still side by side and making yet more contact. He's had a really poor start. So the best driver of the alternate strategies is Wizard and Lars as we know him. But uh, Baraka has made the best start. Was cried out of turn one, but what a reaction to it. He leads the race. Yeah, there's uh, usually people that have good starts from third on the grid around here, and Baraka is no exception. His lightning start was amazing. I would like to see his onboard at the end of the race to see how he did that, because that was incredible as well, as we're seeing Recon, who's getting past Lars on those fresher softs. Don't forget, 1.1 second is the difference, so Recon easily breezes past into um, uh, the, the tricky chicane, past uh, turn 11 and now into turn 12. Biggest lose, I have to say, is Simmer. He's dropped down into... 19th position so those hard choices for him I don't think was the best option I think he got tangled I think in some incidents too so probably oh, oh! So much and contact. he's hit Benny he's hit Benny so yeah he's there definitely a, gonna have to go yeah. to the pits what happened there there was a massive Constantina effect there'll be multiple cars having to pit at the end of lap two with that one that took three or four front wings and broke them all and his car's going off at turn one Brock had massive damage to his car he will have to pit with that, along with potentially Benny and Simo. Um, but we'll see, because some damage doesn't actually show up on the car now, even if it's yellow. I mean, you can see half the cars are going off at the back with their damage. It's a real shame, that because that was really out of most of their control. But uh, definitely the Haas of Kareem Brock, potentially Benny and definitely Simo will have to pit. Uh, looks like at the front, though, uh, Baraka is actually making a decent gap. We can make a couple more attempts to be clear of the DRS zone already, and that is a massive deal in a race where, as we've said, DRS is so useful. Yeah, it is as well. And if you get DRS um, range gone for Baraka, then I think he's going to be dominant for uh, pretty much the first half of the race at least. And for Suka and Valentin to back in this race, he's gonna, they're going to hope that they can pit early for the undercut, which is what they want to do. So. Baraka, I think, a little bit more consistent on pace right now. The Ferrari of Kazizel looking good behind the back of Louis right now. And don't forget, he can't work together in qualifying with Slipstream. Slipstream is banned, but he can work together in the race. So I wonder that's what the Ferrari's going to do. 
Only one Ferrari will be scoring points for the constructors because reserves, like we said, do not score points. So I'm sure maybe Netsky would be helping because there's all a little bit, but I know Netsky wants to score as many points as possible as well because he's also looking for a full-time seat in the future in this tier. DRS activated then, and Suko is still in DRS in front. So he's just about in range at the moment. So let's see if he can gain a bit, a few temps just with the DRS alone. But I'm almost certain the person that's going to make the move out of anyone is maybe Kazizzle, Netsky with that train. The train is just growing bigger and bigger. We're seeing Kareem Brook and Simo into the pits now. Benny's staying out, so I think he got away lightly. I don't know. It's hard to tell but let's hope they don't get side pod damage because that's unrepairable unfortunately and floor damage again also unrepairable unrepa uh, so no one's making the moves yet on this DRS train so uh, they're just hanging in there right now but Kazizzle's getting a good run past eight through nine then and is he going to go for the lunge where we've seen many overtakes being made in the past I think Louis going to try and close the door I think Kazizzle just can't get through at the moment. And yeah, he backs out a bit. Oh, uh, Louis's gone Ooh. wide, actually. Louis's gone wide into past uh, turn 10 and into 11. And I think Kazizzle is going to get a beautiful run. But Louis just not want Kazizzle to have that position. So uh, he defends that and he stays in fifth. But my, oh, my, that was so close for Louis there. That's almost P5 gone for him. But, you know, Kazizzle... He's doing a great job. He just can't get past uh, Louis at the moment. The only chance he had was when Louis made a mistake a moment ago. So that is interesting. Yeah, you've got to be so careful when you're making little mistakes like that, that you don't have any contact as well because I do think Benny has got some extra damage. It isn't just the, the front wing. Mm. Um, it could be, as you said, floor damage or diffuser or anything really that can't be fixed because he's losing a couple of seconds per sector at the minute. And you can see him cruising for the first couple of corners. I'm not too sure how that's going to go for him, but uh, he's he's stuck at the back, man, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, we'll see those two Ferraris. They're getting close again, aren't they? The front guys aren't as close, so they're not going to be fighting just yet, I don't imagine. I do wonder what lessons have been learnt from last week. I hope it's not that, uh, oh, I don't want to race too much. It'll be that, oh, we can race loads. But um, I know what the guys are like. They'll always find the easy way out. But it looks like because had another good exit. Louis struggles for that chicane, and it gives him a bad run up the hill, and I imagine he's having to use a lot of ERS, and he, he did use a little bit more than Gazizzle, who's actually, overall, used more than him, so they're both pushing. How is Louis going to get through here this time? Gazizzle's the one that goes wide, so uh, oh. Louis's not going to be under any pressure there, as uh, Netsky does keep his teammate in check, as Recon picks up the first penalty of the day. Uh, I think that's at the same corner he kept invalid in all his qualifying laps, so he's clearly struggling. And Simo, I think, has reset the track after having a little bit of a moment, so I think he'll get away with that one. I'm not too sure if he reset, though. It's certainly like he'd been up and came back on. Let's see. Hopefully he's got no damage uh, at the back, because in any safety car, he could be straight back into this. So he's got to keep it moving. At the front, the gap's now about three tenths of a second. Perhaps Suku might fancy a look on this lap. It'll be interesting to see how quickly these soft tyres start to go off as well because Lars and Korn, the two Mercedes drivers, I'm sure they'll work together here and try and start breaking into this top 10 because right now they're staying very much in touch which is good news for when the crossover point does happen and they start moving through the field. This is what makes their race at the moment and it's good that they're with each other it means they're not going to have to worry about the rest who could spoil their strategy which right now is working pretty well. As oh, Gil, oh, the, the, home drivers, the home drivers are fighting away here as Suko closes to Baraka, let's hope these two don't bend it, because that would be really quite a share for these two, who've had a decent day so far, Valentin and Gil. And Gil didn't quite manage to get through. Suko was obviously the one who had the best run. And Jess, is it just me, or has the sun completely disappeared, and is it getting ready to rain? Because that looks like it's getting ready to rain now. Look at it. It's got so dark. You're not the only one that's seeing that. I think everyone can see that as well. We're getting repeats of F2 last season. Is it like an F2 curse where when we go to France, it rains? And we're getting that situation all over again, I have to say. And I think at almost every race I commentate, it has rain either in qualifying or in the race. So uh, you, you can thank me later or you cannot thank me later. I know the drivers are going to hate me for it. It's gone dark very quickly. So I wonder that's why... Um, most people have gone for the mediums then to start with instead of the hards. That's probably the occasion. They may think that the, the rain will come later. I think, I believe, the weather is set to approximate, so 
It may say the rain will come then, but it, it turns out not to be. It's just getting darker and darker, mine. A minute, it's just all foggy yeah. at the moment. Oh my goodness, yeah. this could be very, very intense racing. I think Look we're just going to see how these softs hold. I think they're going to stay on for a bit longer than intended, I think. So let's go. One of the telltale signs for me has always been the track lights coming on. That's what's happened. That always tends to spell rain at some point soon. But uh, we'll see what happens there. As uh, looks like Lars is trying on recall. Maybe he thinks he's. Maybe he, if rain is coming, he's realised it's coming now. I better stop making moves now because these soft ones aren't going to pick. I think we lost you. I would rather be on slightly more based on what's happening now. And did we lose me? Oh, have you got me now? Yeah, I've got, got, got you now. Lars through. Lars comes through on recon, and recon's going to get done by the other Mercedes. What I'm saying here is that I wonder if the Mercedes boys have seen... Oh, as, uh, that might be damage. Corn, his front wing, is it all right? That was a big hit from recon, but it looks like he's okay. Um, what I was going to say is that these two Mercedes boys, as Recon's being swallowed up now, might have seen that, hmm, if there's rain coming, it's coming sooner than they expected. And they might want to start getting down the road because that means these soft runners, they're not going to be pitting early. They're going to be pitting at the same time as them if that is rain coming. As Recon spins around, he will ghost, but uh, it's raining now, so he's going to have an even more difficult time. So yes, that is the Mercedes boys, definitely rising. Ah. I should have been on softs. I need to get a move on. And that's exactly what they're doing. This is going to get quite hectic. Luckily, Suko's only six tenths behind Baraka. I don't think that's enough to go for a chance. But it has to be said that Suko has saved the ERS quite a lot. And if he wanted to get through there, he could have. Because Baraka wasn't using any. But he decided not to. It's very risky to make a move. And if you're Baraka, you're the first one, you know, dealing with this rain. It's a difficult scenario, especially when Suko's closing so much as he looks up the hill to same corner. He's going right around the outside, is he? Just trying to show himself. You really want to be careful not to go offline when the rain's coming like this because you could slide off at any point, which Baraka is doing just a bit wide as Suko nearly careened into the back. DRS is disabled. The track is soaked already. I mean, this is incredible. I wonder if Suko's regretting not going for that move because they're all going to have to pit. And I tell you what, if you're Williams right now, Louis is going to be all over Gil trying to get through. And he gave it his best shot, but couldn't manage it. As Gil and Valentin, I don't think they can see each other, unfortunately. As we all head to the pits, Valentin's in Narnia. So is Louis. And Louis got through. I think there's contact. They're all crashed into the pit lane. Jess, that's going to cause potential damage. But they've all got in. And I wonder what that's going to do to the strategy. Because this is getting crazy. Every single car is in the pits. That's Brock spinning. We could get safety cars if anyone bins it. Now, uh, Simo did pit early, so he might get away. Who's going to lose positions? I'm sure Louis is going to fall so far down the field at the moment. Barack has come back out in the lead. Looks like Hadler's jumped up to fourth. And Lars is up into sixth place. It's good for him bouncing all the way down to seventh. And, yeah, look at Louis. He's outside the top ten now. And, well, no one seems to have properly binned it. But if the rain's coming down like this, Jess... Are we going to get potential full wet conditions soon? If it keeps coming like this, we will surely see that very soon indeed. Yes, because I, I was seeing it when it was raining. Well, it was starting to rain. It was coming down very quickly. It started going very dark. It was sunny and then it was just dark very quickly. So, yeah, I think we can get... I think we can get full wets. And Desso's joined now. That's a bit too late, my friend. <laughs> As and he's on wet. Kareem's he's out. He's wet. Kareem's out. He was on the softs. Is that a boo-boo from uh, Kareem now? As I think Lars has just got past that, but yes, he is. I think Lars is liking these wet conditions past into turn eight as well. He's doing beautiful as well. The only driver, I think some of the drivers that are benefited from the pit stop. And yes, Benny is on the wet. So is Recon. he going for a gamble then that the rain is going to get heavier very, very quickly? If this pays off, he doesn't need to pit again. The wets last the same amount of time as the hard tyres, and that could go to the end of the race. So, Benny could play a strategy masterclass. Recon. Oh, no, Recon. He's on the softs. Oh, he, he hasn't peered. He's going to struggle. I think Recon's going to call the safety car here. We've got one wow. extreme rare Recon's on the softs, and then we've got Benny on the wets as well. Benny's not doing too bad on the wets, but you can see the, the inters are faster. But let's see if the rain gets any heavier at this moment in time. 
it's a shame that for recall now, his race has fallen apart in the space of sort of three laps. He got mugged by Mercedes, spun at turn one, didn't pit on that lap, and now it's costing him now. The rain still seems actually intermediate, but um, we will keep an eye on Benny. Although it's a shame that Benny of all drivers is the one taking the risk, because I think he's the one who's got some sort of floor damage and he might not be able to show much pace, but still, he's on the right tyres potentially if the rain's going to get any heavier. Uh, Baraka's got that 2.2 second gap. It's good news for him, this, because no more DRS to worry about. Oh, and Suko seems to be struggling a lot more than he is at the moment with these conditions, because he's having to try and push to catch him, of course. But he's, he doesn't seem capable of doing that at the minute. Um... But yeah, if, if that top three is broken away, uh, Heidler has made places, uh, Lars is still making places, he got by Fabi, who's now under pressure from Valentin, maybe Fabi's struggling a little bit in the conditions, but um, yeah, that top three seemed pretty happy where they are at the minute, and yeah, we'll see what everyone does, although I wouldn't be at all surprised if we get a, any safety cars soon, as Recon has put wets on as well, he might as well, he's someone else who thinks this rain is going to keep going. And uh, yeah, interesting strategy, very interesting indeed. I um, really don't know how to call this, to be honest. It's a bit of a waiting game, this one, because we're only one third of the way through the Grand Prix. It's unpredictable as well, this strategy. I, I like the changeable conditions in terms of uh, dry to wet races, because you never know, oh, is it gonna, is it gonna rain heavier? Is it gonna dry up maybe as well, potentially? Uh, we haven't seen that extreme as well. And we've seen a lot of people go for the pit stop. CC Brain up eight places. He's gained the most. Rizzi up seven. Lars up seven as well. And we have Benny that's up four on the wet. And, uh, but he's 32 seconds down the road. So not ideal. We still gonna be, I think, in 15th anyway, even if everybody else pits for the wet, unless there's a safety car coming as well. And uh, Lars, I think it's looking like he's gonna go for a move in the next couple of moments on Halle. Lars, I think, is the fastest man on track right now on these Inters. He's definitely at home right now. He said he's more comfortable in the wet sometimes around here. But this track in the wet, you can barely see um, in these wet conditions. So uh, these uh, drivers have got to be on their A games. Here comes Lars now. Straightlinespeed.com as Ash Betts gets another penalty as uh, Lars breezes past him. But for how much longer? I think Halle could cover him off. No, he does not. Lars is up into fourth place and maybe he's not that far off a podium either as well. So now he's gained eight positions, the same positions as CC Brain as well, who could get Valentin. No, not quite. Valentin, I think, the biggest loser from those pit stops, I think, out of anyone. And uh, Kazizzo as well. Recon is out of the race and he's retired in the pit lane. Yeah, so I was wondering who it's pitting because he thought the wets weren't good enough, but uh, no, he's just retiring from the race. Um, Benny's still on the wets, but he's going quite slowly. Mind you, I, I do think that could potentially be down to some car damage, like I say. It's a shame he's the one who went for the gamble, because no one else would really see his pace as much if there is damage. Um, but uh, we do have a little trade, because like I say, I think Fabi is possibly struggling for pace. Gil is somewhat catching... Uh, Suko, but that's going to take quite a while. Unless Suko goes off, which he's just done. So I've kind of cursed you a little bit there, Suko. I think Gil oh. might well be passing you now as he heads down towards turn three. It'd be a brave move still from Gil, actually, so he's not going to go for it. This helps Baraka, of course. He's now got a 3.5 second lead. And it sort of proves again that Suko is not enjoying these conditions very much. I wonder if he had a dry setup on and it's just sort of struggling. Because, honestly, using dry setups on a wet track is a total nightmare on this game. You've really got to be careful with it as Gil continues to close. Uh, Fabi still holding off Valentine, CC Brain and Kazizzle, but that is one of the biggest trains of the race at the moment. Gil, once again, closes on Suko. He just, he just wants to see the Alpine make another mistake. He's already seen it once, yeah, I guess he'll just sit there and pressure him into another one at some point. I think that's what you get in these wet conditions, don't you, as well? If someone has clearly got a dry setup or is more comfortable in the dries and then the wets, they haven't had much practice because you many only practice for the dry, don't you? I got to admit, I do the same as well and I don't really practice for the wet, but I'm sure these drivers have probably factored in a wet into their practice and for some of these drivers as well this is the first proper wet race in a way on this game so this is their first experience in a league race in these type of conditions so I can understand why Suko 
is struggling for grit right now on these uh, intermediate conditions as Hadler has got a time penalty. I said he would pick up none. He does pick one, so I'm not going to say too much. And look at that final corner. Gil just has so much more grip compared to Suko. So I think it's going to be the question of when, not if, at this race as well. Another driver that's looking good on these wets, Kazizzle. But let's watch Gil. He almost made the move into turn one. You can see Gil, I think, has been held up by Suku, I think, as well. So I think that's not what he wants. Lars doing very well as well because Izzel actually gets past CC Brain into one, going through two, and he's just on fire at the moment, the Ferrari driver. Could get some decent points, I think, with Netsky being held up by, by him as well due to everyone having to pit. He's dropped down to 14th, but because uh, he's doing brilliantly so far um, in eighth place. He could gain Valentin, maybe, potentially, but there's no DRS, so nobody's going to take advantage. It's about the toe, heading towards turn seven and eight now. Valentin could get Fabi. Fabi's usually the king of rain races, but he's not doing so well so far. But, again, he's still in sixth position, so he, it could be worse. He's still in the points. Valentin can't get past. I'm just seeing if... Gil has the moment to actually get past Suko at the moment because if the rain does get heavier, he will need to get past Suko before everyone else pits. Yeah, he's got to, got to see him on Suko. You don't want to make a mistake though, do you? In these conditions, it is still early in the season. I don't know how much they'll be thinking about that, mind you. But um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what risks people are wanting to take. The the train is getting bigger. I don't think it was actually Fabi that was struggling for pace. So I might need to apologise to you about that. It might just more have been the fact that Lars was just quick at that moment in time and got through. Mm -hmm. But it's still it's still it's true that the trade is quite large down to Louis. Louis who must just be hating this. I mean he's been so unlucky in this race. Because he was close to his team. He had a real go at passing him on the way to the pits. But just didn't happen and it meant he got held up and he lost it. five, six positions because of it. So he'll be trying to fight back as well. Rain seems consistent at the moment, but at any moment it could change again. So we'll need to keep our eye on that. But at the moment, Inter still seen at the tire. But uh, as I said before, we're still in the first half of this race. So far to go. Uh, let's see if Gill's getting any closer to Suko. He's using the ERS every time to close in. He's he, you know, Suko does have more than him. He's he's recovered well from the mistake to stay ahead, and uh, he's sort of on Baraka's pace. Baraka, who's comfortably leading it still, he's just uh, doing what he needs to do. He's going through the motions at the moment as Simo uh, retires in the pit lane. But uh, yeah, Baraka doing a good job. And he's just leaving Suko and Gil to it. And they will, I'm sure, have some sort of fight at some point soon. But the rain, I said it was consistent. I think it's just got heavier as Risa has a spin. I don't know if that was contact, but he's certainly gone round. And I think the rain actually is getting a little bit heavier now at the back end of the circuit, so I might have to book a bit too soon. This could be wet soon, actually. Look at it, it's really getting very heavy. I think you can't, can barely oh. see now at some parts of the circuit. So they're, they're, especially, I think, sector one is where it's the most heaviest and the final part of sector three. But there's some parts of the track where it's not raining as hard as Valentin has been passed by Kazizzle up into P7. So I think we're seeing who has got the, the full wet set up and who hasn't right now. And yeah, I, 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 I think it's full wet. Let us know in the chat if you think it's gonna be full wet, guys, because I think I'm almost certain it's gonna be as well. Baraka could just pit when he wants and uh, he'll be comfortably leading out uh, everybody. And I think we're gonna get the same situation that we saw last time where if your, your teammate is not that far behind, then you're gonna be held up again. I'm just seeing who could be well, in a disadvantage. I don't think anyone is at this stage because the uh, the lower half is near the back. I think Williams again could be under threat with Louis in 10th and Gil in 3rd. But apart from that, everyone else should be fine. Brock's got a comfortable gap. Same with Benny and Netsky as well. So I think, I think the order shouldn't change if they will have to pit again, of course. But I think Suko went a bit wide through 8 and 9. So... I think this could be Gil's chance. Suka's also running out of ERS as well as the red light is uh, flashing in his car. Gil's going to go for the move on the left, it looks like, but Suka closes the door. He's Gil done him. He's doing he's done it. Him. He's very brave, Gil, in these wet conditions, but it is his own track. He loves it, and uh, he did that move with ease. What a great driver he is. He's up into second place, and 
he could be on course three winning this race, but I'm sure you'll take P2 nonetheless anyway. But he's doing a cracking job so far. I think he must like these wet conditions. I think Suku is struggling. I wonder if Lars will catch up to Suku. I think it'll be tough, but he's already brought the gap to 2.9 now. Now it's hovering over three seconds, actually. So scrap what I just said. But um, yeah, I think we're seeing some drivers are doing well in these, these conditions and some drivers... As the rain is getting heavier, they're starting to struggle a bit more. So we could see some standing water soon in the next couple of laps as well. So do watch out for that. I think it's worth pointing out, if there is a need to change to wets, you might not see anyone doing it. Because I had the situation uh, before in F3 when I used to race. So we had a wet race here and it sort of started dry, went intra, went wet. Uh, about half the grid went to wets, but the problem was the full wet period only lasted about five laps. The rain kept going, but it was went it was back to interest in five laps. And so anyone who changed two wets had to change back. And so it could cost you two pit stops worth if you get it wrong. So it would have to be a complete and utter total downpour if this is to go to full wets. Um, so while the rain is heavier at the minute, I, I doubt you'll see anyone pit for the full wets unless there's a safety car maybe or something. Maybe you might take the risk there, but at the moment, if the rain's going to get any lighter, of course, then you wouldn't want to change to wets. But that might be why people aren't changing right now, because they're thinking ahead and thinking, well, this, this heavy rain's going to last five minutes, then it'll be back to enter, so why would I need to bother to change to, enter, er, to wets? So that's possibly what might be going on here, so uh, we'll see what's happening. But uh, everyone seems happy enough in enter's actually at the moment anyway, so no real sign to change just yet. I think we're in the cusp right now of being good for any tyre, being good for the four wets or the inters. So if you want to be on the faster tyre, I would say go for the inters, I would say, at this moment in time before it gets worse. But I think we're going to get to a stage where I think everyone's just going to go so slow. It's like soft on an inters track. I think we'll get to that stage where they're just going to struggle for grip once again. And... Um, I think it's going to be a stage where with a few laps to go, I do agree, they're going to be on the wrong tyre, but you're going to lose track position if you pit, unless they the safety car. I think the safety car would probably trigger some of these guys to pit if there is one, but no one is budging at the moment. That's uh, one disadvantage of this wet weather. There's not many brave moves for overtake, unless you're Lars, who made some moves, and maybe Gil as well for P2. I don't think Gil is going to get Baraka at the moment, but Kazizzle on the back of Fabi doesn't look like he's going to go for the move. Nope, he's not. Hal is also in this fight as well, but he also got the time penalty. We were talking about this earlier. Time penalties can make or break a race. Haller, Valentin, Louis, Ashbest and Netsky on more than three second time penalties. Everybody else with none. I'm seeing if anyone's actually got any warnings because they could be one warning shy of a penalty. I would say it's a lot easier to get a penalty on this wet track because it's hard to see the track at times. So uh, I think we'll probably see more drivers get penalties. And uh, if any of the leaders get a penalty, that could decide the race win right there. Unless you're Baraka, who's got a four second gap already. And even if he does get a penalty, he should be fine unless Gil makes a last minute charge. Um, in the last, cu last couple of laps. We've got 11 laps to go of this race now. Baraka leads by 3.9 seconds to Gil. Then it's Suku, then it's Lars, Hadler, then Fabi, and then Kazizzle. We've got a train, I think, from Hadler all the way down to Kazizzle now. So I think who will blink first out of these guys will be the question of who actually gets uh, the same position. I'm seeing the onboards right now. It is, it is chucking it down right now, and you can hardly see, so... Um, yeah, I think it's going to be very, very tough on uh, who I think is going to do well. I don't think Benny made the right decision to go onto the wet. So I think he was thinking it was going to come sooner to be heavier. But unfortunately, he's down in last place. I don't think he's going to get any points, unfortunately. But at least he's still going. So, fair play. Well, looking at the lap times at the moment, um, everyone is getting slower. But it's not by a massive degree. I mean, the race leaders have lost a couple of tenths here, a couple of tenths there. This lap is particularly slower, actually, than his previous ones, and everyone is starting to drift towards the 42s, 1 minute 42s, while at the start of the intercent they were all in the 40s, and it's, everyone's getting slower, and it's, it's, it's that 6, 7 tenths a lap they're losing, and so, I mean, you can see it for yourself, the rain is getting heavier, 
So we'll see what Baraka does in this lap, just to give an indication of what the track is doing at the moment. His last lap was a 1 minute 41.131. And with how heavy this rain is now getting, I think this will be about 6, 7, 10 slower than that. And it's that balancing act. Do you want to risk going onto wets? Suku certainly does. He's into the pits. Let's see what he goes on to. And Baraka has lost 8 tenths of a second on this lap. And I think that's the sign the other drivers need to go into the pits. Now, what are they going to do? Are they going to go for new entries or are they going to go for wets? For wets. Because wets, which Suku is on, then that suggests to me that this rain is here to stay. But if it isn't, then this will be quite a big gamble. Let's see how much time Suku can gain, because this is effectively an undercut still. Um, it's basically, push as hard as you can, let's see what these tyres are going to be like. Baraka, let's have a look at his first sector again, because it'll be a good indication. Is the track getting slower still? He is still going slower every single sector. So this will cost him some time, this, but, you know, you've got a pit stop advantage now over Suku. Do you really do you really want to pit? Will the tires get to the end? I guess that might be the bigger question to ask. Maybe that makes the pit stop worth it. But yeah, this is fascinating stuff. But it was Suku who made the first move, so fair play to him regardless. As we have a uh, uh, Brock round, and well, he did this when he was on the softs as well, and it was starting to go. Out. And you can see the standing water is there, so perhaps enters aren't that oh. good. Balancing the ten second penalty. Has he straight lined the chicane? I I guess he has. I'm surprised he's a 10 second penalty though, because he hasn't gained any positions or anything like that. I don't think, but um, or maybe he has actually. Has he? I don't no, know. He, as Brock is out the I'm race. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what he's done there, but um, well, well he's got a penalty for it. Baraka, Baraka stays out. is staying out. Gill will pit. Uh, Lars sent as well. So yeah, we're certainly getting no split strategies. Some people don't think losing a whole pit stop is worth it. They don't think it's worth it for one or two seconds a lap gain. They just don't think it's worth it, some of these guys. And I don't know, I mean, I'm, in, in one way I'm inclined to agree, in another way it could flip like that. This is fascinating. It's just flipping the order on its head anyway, because we're seeing half the grid are pitting, the rest are sticking to their guns. You've really got to be committed if you want to go on the wets, and that is what uh, Gil and Suko are doing. And it looks like Gil is going to be just a bite ahead. He moved very late, but Suko side by side into turn one. He's going to shove Gil a bit wide, but eventually Gil does get the trap position. But Suko does have the better um, heated up tyres, which is a bit more important in these wet conditions, really, because you really have to have them rubbered in to have that chance. And he's all over the back of Gil, trying to get through. And we're going to have to keep an eye on the lap times now. What was Gil's, uh, what was um, the first sector time? Let's compare. 26-0 compared to 27-1. Um, so the, the, the wets are still slower. The wets are way slower, but that might have just been because uh, those two were fighting. So we'll, we'll get a bit of a comparison maybe going on the next lap. But, uh, oh, I just, I don't know. I don't think these wets are the right idea, Jess. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I think they've got it wrong. Mm, I, I don't know who to uh, agree with. I don't know who's got the right strategy as well. And I'm sure the viewers at home, I think, are probably as clueless as we are as well. So I think we're just going to have to wait, I think, until the end of the towards the end of this period to see hang on who has got the right strategy as well and I think all it would take is a safety car for everybody to go on the four wets and I don't think anyone is budging Lars is staying out, so is Baraka and Haller again and uh, I think if Gil could get past Netsky, we do know that the wets are the faster tyre but uh, I think I'm starting to incline that yes, the wets is probably the wrong decision but the drivers are going to prove us wrong hopefully and uh, make this a cracking race so far corn has got a penalty yeah he's made contact with louis into turn one that was close to going very wrong indeed luckily they both say in the same direction there but it was a little look by corn into turn one and it was never gonna go it was never gonna work but uh yeah a bit of a clumsy look but um yeah we'll compare lap times at the end of this one because girls now got a decent enough gap to suit couture he's not gonna have to worry about him and then we can compare first sector. So 25.6 compared to 25.9. It's only three tenths of a second difference in the wet's favour. But that'll be maybe about a second a lap. And that is just not enough. He's got to make 27.8 seconds, has Gil. 
to, to, to beat Baraka. So, like, I don't know. It, the rain could get heavy. We've obviously seen uh, monsoon conditions in F1 games before. They are completely random. You can't even select it on the menus. It is just a random chance. They might need that now. But, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. We'll, we'll compare the lap time at the end of the lap, sure, as well. Yeah, well, I experienced monsoon conditions on this game twice and they both caused a safety car so and I don't think there's going to be a safety car at the end of it Lars has saw that I think the rain's getting heavier so he goes in Baraka stays out will Hadler be Ooh. triggered by Lars no Fabi he's not being triggered either Lars the wet weather merchant oh that's going to be interesting again that is that is probably not a good call but you can see it's getting heavier in some place I just don't I just literally don't know. This is how good it is right now. We can see some drivers make a mistake and that could change everything right now as well. That could bring the likes of uh, the ones who were staying on those Internetski back into this race. Gil's now back up into seventh. He's got to find three seconds on Corne now. And I'm sure Corne wants to hold that position in a heartbeat on Lurin. They're still having a good, good fight, to be fair. Yellow flag. That's Valentino Polsitzer out the race and that's uh two Crash. out of two safety safety car. Car. that's wet surely no, that's I... gotta be wet well i still don't know i i i wonder if they'll still pit for inches i don't well because 1.2 seconds was the gap between baraka and gill on that last lap in gill's favor but i mean 13 lap old inters aren't exactly going to be at their best are they so the gap between wets and enters is so small Baraka has a choice to make now because they'll they'll pit. He he will pit. He's got twenty three point three seconds. To he'll pit. But what will the rest do? Because if they pit, then they're giving up the track position to Gill. And this safety car lasts three or four laps. They could still get those enters to the end. But I I imagine Baraka would pit. And to be honest with you, this is a bit of a. Yeah, I guess you can go for West if it's a safety car. That's what we said, isn't it? This is a lot less risky, um, but let's see what he's going to go on to. I think Baraka might end up being the only one who pits here, because the rest of them are just, it's just too risky. Um, because they could get a result out of it. But let's see what Baraka is going to go on to. They look like full wets, so he's going to put the full wets on. And uh, what would be out. fresh for Fabi stays out. Have to stay. They have to, because Gill is so close. They'd lose position instantly. But fresh wets at this point, I guess you can do that, because it's old entry should be facing behind. That safety car is what Gill needed. He, but he will have to still pass a lot of cars. Hadler does retake the lead, but he has got a penalty. But uh, yeah, this um, yeah, it's it, it is still hard to predict to be honest. But um. Risa pitting as well. I guess that actually does make sense. He's a bit further down. It's a, essentially a sort of free pit stop to get himself in with a chance. He'll be 13, but it's not horrendous. Benny, I don't know if he's going to get a chance to catch the pack. He's 1 minute 30 off Risa. But, uh, oh man, this race just got even more interesting. But, I mean, the rain doesn't look that heavy, Jess, does it? it, it it's it, got lighter. It's gone lighter, so that could yeah. bring the Inters people back in this. That could well, bring... this, is it. this is what I said. If, if you go on to wet and the rain gets lighter again, well, you have to make another pit stop, don't you? Because then they'll start to burn out. So that's, that, was the, that was the decision Baraka had to make. He's, not, he's made his bed. Still new wets. I guess you would still take them over 15 lap old inches or 16 lap old, however old they are by the time we restart the race. But it will be not too many laps left. We'll have, what, four laps left maybe when this goes in? So, I mean... It is a risk because that's the rain's stopping. The rain is so close to stopping now, and I can he's see not sun. on the wrong tire. I can see sun yeah, as well we saw, on the track. We saw we saw how quickly it went to wet. It could so easily go back to dry just as quickly, and that's appearing to be what that's what's happening because that rain is going to stop any second now. And Baraka must be sitting there thinking, "What have I just done?" Hadler's got a free setting penalty. He might make that three seconds now. He, he might just do it. Oh. <laughs> oh, what are they going to do? Uh, and, 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 the, and, and the interesting thing about it as well, the, the Inters last the same amount of time as the mediums. They're pretty much past their sell-by date now. 14 laps. So their tyres are going to be dead, those Inters, towards the end. 
So as uh, Lars comes in, Lars yeah, comes Lars in. Did. Lars is gonna go in for Inter, surely. He, he has. He's got, <laughs> oh, this is this is this is this is turning out to be a crazy race. Yeah, he goes on Inter. New Inters, new Inters to the end. That could be such an inspired call. We just don't know. Reason as well. He's in this, for Inters. If, if this safety car goes in at the end of this lap, then we'll have five laps of this. And a, a new set of entries right now could be exactly what you need to get to this, to, to win this race. This has just been flipped on the head. This safety car could not have come at a better time for us. Couldn't have come at a worse time for the race leaders. But my goodness, this race has just been thrown a massive curveball. It's absolutely no longer full wet conditions. It just isn't. Hadler will lead them away on very much in the mud intermediates. Though, as we said, if it was a soft to medium strategy and then a safety car would have been exactly what they needed to make sure that worked. Mm. So maybe, maybe that, maybe that gives them enough leeway to get to the end of the race now. But um, if as the lighter this rain gets, the more difficult this is gonna get and the more of these new inters are gonna look like a very good call indeed. Let's see if the safety car is gonna go in because Benny is still a long way off. I don't know if the game's gonna let him catch up because he hasn't really made many inroads. He'll, they might give it one more lap just to let him catch. He'll catch by the end of the next lap, but uh, no offence, Bernie, we don't really want you to catch up. <laughs> I want to see this race get underway again because this is fascinating. That is F2 for you folks. This is crazy races, insane races and close races, I have to say. Don't you dare watch F1. This is where the real action is on a Monday night as uh, we still got a few more laps to go. Make sure you watch this because F1's on the, only on their qualifying session. We've got a race to finish, so st stay in tune into this. Don't go to F1 yet. You could go to F1 at the end of this stream, but not now. Hadler still leads from Baraka and Fabi. Fabi still wins the equation yeah. as well, to be honest. I think Fabi... It's no he's I think in there. Yeah. I think cause Fabi I he's think in the plot seat for this. Yeah, because Fabi in this in, in F2 oh, has look done at this well. Pitting again. Oh, the so pit again. In. Yes, all the wet runners. All oh, the wet no. runners have jumped ship. Baraka no, is the only one on the wets. And well, this is this is even better news if you're Lars because well, you just made four free positions there. Reset as well. He made two pit stops in the safety car and he's still gained time and he's now also in such a good position. Fabi, this extra lap behind safety car might be enough to help him though. Um, but uh, CC Boone as well. Louis, Kornetsky, there's still a lot of cars for Lars to try and overtake. But Baraka now, I feel so bad for him because, like I say, he had the free pit stop but who could blame him for choosing wets? This is the thing, who could have blamed him? Because at the time it was, but as I said before, it could change so quickly. I hate being in this position as a driver because it is a bit in the luck of the gods, this, and he sort of lost out massively because he led the race all the way, had the great start, and I think his luck might just run out now. But let's see, let's see what's gonna happen. Let's not make any guarantees. He could still win it because he is still technically the net race leader, and if there's enough fighting going on behind, no DRS or anything to worry about, perhaps he could do it, but I don't know. I just don't see it happening. We'll have to, we'll have to grid now on new enters. This is going to be the most entertaining end to a race you've ever seen there we in go. your life. Do not, do not get away from this, because this is going to be something worth watching, because all seven of the guys at the front are on the wrong tyre, whether it be absolutely dead tyre or just the wrong compound and you're going to see the, the 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 other half of the pack rain hell on them, frankly. This is going to be absolute carnage for the last three laps of the French Grand Prix. So safety car, lights are off obviously. It will head to the pit lane and it will be in Hadler's hands and I have a feeling he'll be feeling quite happy about having a Baraka, the car behind it, because I assume Baraka's just not going to get an exit. But uh, Hadler, let's see when he's going to go. I assume he'll just floor out of his last corner, if he can. Tentatively, I'm sure he'll go, but we are racing once again. Bit of a slide for Hadler. Baraka does put his ERS on. He's trying to catch up. 
but let's see what the grip's going to be like down towards turn one because I'm not sure they're going to have much as we head through. Everyone's making it through okay. Baraka's only chance is that, well, at least he's on brand new tyres. If Reza gets a penalty, that could cost him. At least he's on brand new tyres compared to the guys ahead here on dead tyres. It might still give him a chance. It would be a remarkable race when he manages it, as uh, Lars hasn't made any moves yet, but I'm sure he'll have just buckets of grip as he heads out of these uh, sort of slower corners. He's just got to strategize this. Three laps is not very long, but all he really has to do is get out to Fabi. He doesn't have to worry about Hadler. But um, yeah, he might well struggle with this. We've got a lot of uh, slipstreaming going on in the back strip. Barack has held his position. Louis trying on CCT Brain, doesn't go for the move. And Lars doesn't go for the move on Netsky either. Is he going to try and cut back as Suko loses positions and gets a penalty? The first move is happening now for Lars. Jess, this is getting interesting. He's going for it. Yep, he is. I think he's got Netsky at the top of a hat at the moment, but Netsky is pressuring Lars as well. But with those fresher mediums and with Netsky's tyres dead, I think that's surely a move for uh, Lars done. As uh, another fresher tyre runner of Risa is in, uh, got past Netsky as well. And I think Gil's going to potentially get past Netsky too. We'll have to wait and see. I've got to say, Baraka is doing a great job trying to hold up Fabi and CC Brain. He can still get the oh, win here. But Fabi. I, he can't, no. He can't. He's going to go he's for the move. Sector 3 is the zone where the tyres really show their difference. Reese has had an accident and everything's changing now. We've got two cars ghosting through each other. Fabi has to get through Baraka for the race win. He's not doing it. And look at Lars. Lars has just made three positions there, look. And he's up to P5. Louis's gone through Corn. And surely Fabi. It is all or nothing for him now. He's got to get down the inside. We've only got one and a half laps to go. You've got to show more commitment than that, man. You've got to get through. There, there he, he is. He's in two. Second place. And now he's got to make the gap because Barack has gone off the track. CC Braid is free. And look at Lars. He's done another two cars. He's up to third. He could even win this thing on track still. He's flying along. Corn has now done Baraka. And look at the two Williams. They're going alongside. They're going to both flank round him. That's fantastic. And uh, Baraka is surely going to have to, have to back off on this one. It's a losing fight, unfortunately. And he's only going to fall further because there goes Netsky around the outside. Because there's no might well get him too. We've got Yellow Flag. I think Ash Best might have lost it. And Baraka will be out of the points before you know it. This is such a shame for him. Fabi is still within the three seconds he needs to win this race. Ferrari are going side by side for seeing corner. Not the best idea on a wet track, especially when uh, one's on new tyres, one's on old tyres. Surely they should be playing the team game here and trying to get Kazizzle as many points as possible, but it's not quite as easy as that when you're sitting there with only one lap to go. Kazizzle, though, does go finally down the inside and he'll have to have the grip. And now we've got to look at large because as it stands, Fabi is the net race leader. He's making the gap and he's doing enough to win this race. And if he can just hold on, it seems an impossible task. If he can hold on and keep ahead of Wizard, the new username for Lars, you've got to remember this is still Lars, we know what he's like, we know how good he is. He's going for it straight away, he's trying to pressure Fabi, but that's a bit risky for him as well because it'd be costing him second place if he can't get through. He's got to make this move at the right moment, we're on the final lap, it couldn't really be easier for Lars. But he's got to make sure he gets it right. Because if this goes wrong, you'll know about it. As Fabi, he gets, he taps him, look. And it's going to cost him that three seconds. So you've really got to be careful. Gil, he's on the scene as well. So you really don't want to cost yourself the victory to him as well. Here comes Wizard. He's going on the inside. Imagine Fabi will give this absolute error. Because he's gained back the half a second he lost. But surely, as he goes down the inside, Wizard's through. Lars will win the race. Surely he can't lose it from here. And I don't think he needs to worry about catching Hadler. All he has to do is make sure Fabi can't go back at him. Look at Korn as well, trying to go up the inside of CC Brain. <laughs> that could be contact and look out for Gil as well because they're going to make contact. Gil smells a podium in all this as well, you know. If he can get out to Fabi before the end. Uh, oh, I don't know if he will. I mean, he's on the much better tyres, but I think there's not enough corners. And Kazizzle fancies him as well. But we've got to look then at Hadler. He is currently sat in a net P3, possibly. But it'll depend how much he loses in these last couple of corners. He needs Gil and Kazizzle to fight. He will come around the final corner for the second time this season. 
and Aston Martin is going to see the checkered flag first. But it's going to be Lars. He pitted. He chose the right tyre at the right time. He wins here in Le Castellet. What a fantastic drive. And CeCe Brin's been shoved to the back of a 20 second penalty, which means Fabian is in second. And it looks like Kazizzle got Gill on the line to steal the podium away from him. What a fantastic end of the race. I mean, we knew he had the best chance, but Lars, he succeeded perfectly. He made every opportunity that came his way there, and he took it perfectly. That was a crazy end to that race. It had everything, to be honest, as well. People on the wrong tyres, people spinning, people going for moves, and we thought Lars wasn't going to do it, but Lars did sensational. I think he, I think he was said P7 in the safety car and went on to win, win the race. That is just sensational, and Wizard rhymes with Blizzard, so, and Blizzard's racing in F1, so could we see Blizzard win the race in F1 later on? I don't know, but Lars is the the king of France today. Unfortunately, a French driver did not win his home race, but um, and suddenly it's all dry again, but uh, that, that, that wasn't what happened, of course. It was raining for most of it, but from 12th to 1st, that I, uh, that I said that I say is driver of the day material as well, and Corne as well from 13th to 5th, he, he did very well as well. So fair play to both of these drivers who again are going to score some nice points. And Benny, uh, where did he come from? He was he was lapped up like a few before the safety car, and he's up from last to sixth. That that that's just how crazy this race has, race has been, folks. Wow. Well, that's what no penalties does for you, isn't it? That is uh, fantastic from Benny. I mean, he stuck it in there because he was so far behind. He must have had some sort of really bad damage. I mean, look at his fastest lap. It's four seconds slower than everyone else's. But he stuck in there. He kept in the race. And he's got what he deserves. So well done to him. In all fairness, that's fantastic. But yeah, fantastic drive from Lars as well. I'm trying to work out who would be championship leader after all this because I do suspect that it might be Kazizzle who takes the lead of this championship now. Two third places in a row, now he's sitting on 20 points. I think he would be leading to the championship now because Suko fell completely away. Yeah, Suko was looking like he was going to get second, but the rain just got him. Like, he just he just wasn't liking the rain whatsoever. And it was a shame because that could have been, I think, him taking the lead of the championship if he was able to keep it together. So uh, a bit unfortunate, but... Yeah, well, we, we will see what that does for you. But I think Suka and Babs are going to drop anyway. I think it could be Kazizzle that takes her to the lead because he's got another third place on the bounce as well. I'm just going to see where Fabi is as well because I'm doing live standings as as we speak. And then we've got Lars who... Lars didn't get in the points last week. Um, he finished 14th. And now he's... Uh, actually, no, Lars DNF last week. Now he's won the race and he's joint... Uh, points uh, level with Bouters now, obviously with that one win. I think it's K either Kazizzle or Corn that is your championship leader. No, it's Kazizzle. Kazizzle's your championship leader, I think. But we'll find out more as we head into the next race next week. But Kazizzle's got to be happy after that race, surely. Hopefully, you can hear some of these drivers in the interview soon. Well, hopefully we can talk to them because it'll be fascinating to see what they were thinking with all the weather that was uh, messing everyone about at the end there. And, um, yeah, I do feel so sorry for Baraka, though. I mean, he did have an impossible choice to make there. He knew he had to pit because he knew others would pit. And, yeah, just chose the wrong decision because he was such... He, he made such a good drive today, but that yeah, could happen, doesn't it? I'm sure he'll get his day. He's certainly proven he's got some pace, but... uh. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what the drivers have to say if they decide they want to uh, want to have a wee chat. But uh, no one yet, Jess? No, I don't think so. Because uh, it's all who finished on the podium. I don't. His his mic is bad on Discord, so he's unable to join us, which is a bit of a shame. Because I would have liked to see how he feels being the championship leader. I'm seeing if anyone else wants to join, but uh, we'll talk about the next track which I believe is Spa. Oh my goodness, I love Spa. Spa, one of my favourite tracks on this game. Watch out for El Rouge and Radion and Lecom and all that. And um, that's going to be Battle Central, I have to say. And Belgium, another track where we could have rain that affects things because highest amount of rainfall out of all the tracks on the calendar, um, according to some facts I found online. Crazy stuff, that. But Belgium should be another 
good race as as he has shown in F2 in the past. So I can't wait for next week. I, I seriously, next week is going to be so much fun. I'm glad I'm not racing because last time I raced at Spa, kind of didn't go too well at all, did it, Jess? But uh, <laughs> not like that already. I can't wait to commentate on it. Commentate is what I do better at Spa, trust me. So, yeah, I cannot wait. I mean, we always have good races there. And as you say, the weather, if it's anything like today, it's going to be a classic. We had, I think what, I'm trying to remember what pre-season race it was, but we had one of the best races I've ever commentated on here in Spa when the rain just on, off, on, off, on, off. If we get that again, you'll be in for just an absolute treat. I love Spa. It'll be fantastic. I think everyone loves Spa, whether you're driving or, or commentating as well. But yeah, I, I'm not good at Spa when I race that either. So I think we're both better in the commentary box in Spa too. So uh, at least we have something in common. So I don't think we have any drivers who want... Oh, Fabby's in the in the waiting Fabby. room. Hey, so uh, Fabby who finished P2, I believe, uh, just ahead of Kazizzle. Hopefully he would. Uh, his mic is fine as well. So let's drag him in. Fabi, an excellent result from you in in the crazy race that we had. So talk us through uh, how how you fit fit in the race when because your end result was absolutely superb. And Fabi, can you hear us? Can you? Oh, that that, that there you go. Uh, talk us about that race because you finished in P two after all of that, and uh, you probably didn't think you were going to get that after. Some of the troubles you had earlier, and uh, you were battling with so many people as well. Talk us through the the, the thoughts on that race because you were fantastic. Uh, I don't know what to say really. Um, and it was super hard to be on that old uh, inter tires, and um, Lars was incredible fast at the at the beginning of the inter stint. Um, I know it's going to be chaotic in the last lap and I think in the last corner there were some um, crashes or wheel bumps, I don't know. Um, yeah, but um, just a notice for you, I think um, Tata gets his penalty removed, so I think I'm going to be P3. <laughs> uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Still a podium on the, on, on the cards for you, which is still great cause, con considering the, your, your results as well and... Uh, you, you seem to like the rain, don't you? Because most of your good results in PSG OF2, when I've commented on you, has been in, has been in the rain. Now, are, are you going to hope this carries on? Um, uh, this I, I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I hopefully this will carry on to the seed for you as well. But did you ever predict that it was going to rain this hard and then go to Inter again? Or did you just have to um, go, go with your guts? Because you saw the likes of Baraka pitting for the wets and... Uh, um, you saw other people doing the same as well. And uh, what were your thoughts in the safety car period when you know that the things could change at a drop of a hat? Um, I think Jeff said in lap 18 that the full wets are better than the Inters, but um, during the safety car, um, Jeff told us that the Inters were better. And then I hope that uh, Baraka um, wets doesn't work. And we yeah, everything, everything works out for, for the Inter drivers. And I don't know where he ends up, Baraka, but um, yeah, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I'm, I'm just speechless. This was a fun race. And uh, Bista Consistent doing very well in the championship as well. So uh, very, very, very pleased for you as well. And heading to Spa next week, which could have uh, some more twists and turns there. Uh, you do seem to do quite well in the track in, the, in some cases and not do so well in some cases too. What... What is going to be your expectations after the chaos and craziness of this week? Um, um, let's wait and see, because the grid is, is so strong, and um, even with a point three, I was only P8 in qualifying. I think anything can happen, Every everyone can win a race, and yeah, it's going to be a really, really uh, um, good season, and a tight season. Owen, do you have any questions for our, our P2 stroke P3 driver when the penalties get sorted? <laughs> I don't actually have much to ask. I think Jess covered all of it, but just want to say congratulations because the pressure on that last lap must have been quite a lot and uh, to get to the line in the end was uh, very impressive. It's a good drive. Thank you, thank you. And I don't think we have anyone else in the 
Boof. No, we don't have anyone in the rating room. So that is it then. At least we have one interview this week, which was better than last week. Last week, we had no one that wanted to talk to us. So uh, glad we had someone who was wanting to talk to us this week. So like we said just earlier on, we got Spa next week, which should be exciting. And uh, we still got more France action coming up for you right now. So we still got many tiers doing their France races, including F1, which you can watch now. Um, uh, we, you, 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 could, you could leave us if you want to. And then we've got F5 on as well, and F6, and F8. Yeah, F8 that's on now. And then we'll start all over again on Wednesday with PC F3 and F2 streaming at 7 and 8 o'clock. And then we've got PC F1 on Thursday, and the lower tiers on Thursday as well. And then we've got Sunday, um, the, the lower assist, the higher assist tiers, and then we got us at, back at 7 pm on Monday for some more spa fun. So, thank you, Erin, once again for joining me in the commentary box. Let's hope spa is just as entertaining as France. Absolutely, it's a pleasure as always, Jess. Pleasure to all the viewers as well. Hope you all enjoyed the race and do join us next week. It's going to be a classic, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I want. Can we just have next week now, please? Because <laughs> uh, I'll like to commentate, but anyway, we're, I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a good night and we will see you next week for the Belgium Grand Prix. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.